Welcome back to another episode of Crave TV. Today we are here in Worley, Idaho at the Coeur d'Alene Casino. And I'm outside. I heard Adam was out here and I can't find him yet. Oh. Hey, I'm over here. I think I see him. I'm just looking for Bigfoot. I heard there was a sighting. A Bigfoot sighting. All right, well, maybe I'll come help you find him. Welcome to Crave TV. Hi, I'm Adam Hegstead, chef and restaurateur in the, in the Northwest. I'm all about the people because that's what hospitality is built on. Hi, I'm Chandler Baird, local foodie and lifestyle influencer at Spokane East. I'm all about highlighting our local eateries and the communities that support them. Crave TV is a telling of stories through visiting the places and restaurants, meeting the people who make it happen, and talking to the chefs who help create this amazing industry. This is Crave TV. All right, so we're here at the Coeur d'Alene Casino. I saw your name in big, bold letters Oh, over did you there. see it over there? I saw it. Yeah, it's a great restaurant here. <laughs> Can't wait to try it. And uh, we're gonna go cook some milk. Oh, Underground. Oh, cool. never done that, let's do it. All right. All right, I'm back here with Michael Harry Chin at the Chinook restaurant at the Coeur d'Alene Casino. He's gonna show us uh, how to do fry bread over here. Yeah. All right, so what, what do we start with? Well, first of all, we got to start off with flour. We got baking powder, and then okay. we got salt. It's very simple. It's not a um, complicated. Is this like your own recipe. recipe, or has this been passed down? The generations? This this is a recipe that I adopted, but I also added my own special ingredient, and that special ingredient is soda water. The soda okay. water helps for a nice crispy crust on the outside, still keeping it soft and chewy on the inside. Okay, and then so the thing I think is pretty interesting is everybody sort of has their own like they take do. on this, right? And there's they like. Do really soft fry bread that's almost like funnel cake and then you have some that's more of like a little bit chewy. There is. I think it's like very interesting to see how, and everybody, is, everybody thinks their recipe is like the right one, right? My recipe is not going to be as good as your nana's or your, yeah, as, yeah. Or your aunties yeah, or your exactly. sisters. That's, yeah, there's like that's a lot for of sure. traditional ties there. With right. my fry bread, I like it to be the vessel carrying the flavors of what you're going to be dipping it into okay. or what you're going to be putting on top yeah. of it. So it's very simple. It, what what it, do you like to put on it? I like to put uh, huckleberry jam on it. Oh yeah, like and, a little uh, huckleberry jam, some honey, and so. Like and that. some honey and honey yeah. butter. So here we go with my fry bread recipe. I like to use eight cups of flour. Okay. And this is going to yield about forty three by three pieces of fry bread. So it's going to be for a larger group of people. Okay. I would do this for stick games or powwows or a funeral. Like how many pieces of fry bread do you use for stick games here? For stick games, we're probably going to go through about maybe seven hundred pieces. So. Yeah. It's, it's, it's quite, a bit. quite a bit, yeah. And those are a little bigger pieces too, right? Uh, yeah, I make them all different sizes um, when I do for big groups like that because you never know how much fry bread somebody's going to yeah. actually want. Yeah, I think the Pow Wow, we were doing something like 2,500 pieces. Or oh, it was up there. Like, it was amazing. Yeah, it was a crazy amount. Um, I like to put uh, five tablespoons of baking powder. This is going to help okay. it rise and get it its airiness. And then what kind of flour are you using? Just eight all-purpose flour? All-purpose, okay. leached. So I got five tablespoons of baking powder. Now I gotta get salt. A little salt, just a little bit. You don't want too much. So I do one teaspoon. Okay. Two teaspoons, and that's it. All right. And I like to go while it's dry with my hands, go in and mix it up. Okay. Give it a good blend. Feel it starting to, the little balls of flour starting to, to break down and yeah, just get nice and loose. Nice and loose. Okay, it's not too hard. Yeah. Get my little. Cup. And I got to show off your your uh, awesome jacket here. I mean, check this out. You got stripes here. It's like very tribal, and that is amazing. That's a Chinook salmon on Chinook the back. Chinook salmon, like the restaurant. My girl made it. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty great. It's supposed to be like a take on a um, a ribbon shirt that you would yeah, wear yeah, to like a powwow. Yeah. 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 I like to use soda water because it makes the outsides crispy while keeping the insides nice and doughy and okay. soft. Yeah, and I think it's kind of the same idea between we do that sort of with beer batter. We'll do like, you know, the beer is already foamy. We'll still yep. have the baking soda in there, so you kind of have a double acting yep. sort of riser in there. Yep. Then the soda water instead of regular water, it's cold from coming from, you know, you're using soda water. Yep. So it really gets it nice and puffy. It creates a just, light, a little bit lighter batter. Absolutely. I like to take my time just kind of folding this in there a little bit. You can see it starting to foam yeah. up. Yeah. 
That's a yeah, real... so you don't create that gluten in there, make it a nice soft dough. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So you really, you barely mix it there. So you want, you don't really want to develop that gluten. You want to you be able to. You do not want to over mix I mean, it. Look how soft this is. Like you can barely touch it. I mean, it's look at that. Start to stretch a little bit. I mean, it's so soft. I mean that, which makes it really difficult. But it, I'm sure that's what gives it really that fluffiness. It is does. That, it really does. That softness. Okay. And I might just take my little spatula here. Come underneath okay. here. Flop them upside down. All right. Make sure that they separate. They can stick a little bit together in here. So what you want to do yeah, is you just so get, soft. Some, get some nice dry flour around it so it becomes its own unique individual piece. Now imagine having to do a thousand pieces or yeah, that's two thousand pieces. I'm, I'm you're flying actually, You're actually this. a lot faster than me. I, I, like, I would pull off a little piece of it and then roll it out. So. Yeah, yeah. And that works too if you got the time. That's no, this is way quicker. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the way. Then what do you what temperature are you frying at? Okay, here? with this fry bread, normally um, in restaurant fryers we go with about 350 degrees. Okay. Um, you can do that, but that's gonna take a little bit longer to get the brownness that you want. Okay. I turn them up to about 370, 375. Just depends on, on, on the fryer, okay, of course. Okay, to get it nice and puffy. To get it nice and puffy and brown at the right time so it doesn't lose too much moisture. Okay. So I'll just give a little shake. Go ahead and drop them in there. And you see them going. It's a nice good sizzling sound. Then about how long do they fry in here? We're gonna let them fry for probably about three minutes altogether. Okay. Just gotta keep an eye on it. Yeah, and these have like a little more uniform shape. You know, usually mine are kind of a little more. Yep, little they can be <laughs> you know, any nice. shape you want, you can make yeah, them. Yeah. Right when it gets about to this golden brown, you wanna flip it mm -hmm. and then let it get this brown on the other side. Okay. Just make sure that it doesn't get kind of stuck in the middle there and mm -hmm. you yep. have this like you don't want 10 minutes on one side, two on the other, like like a bad steak. <laughs> yeah. And how can you tell when they're done? So after they've been floating? So they're floating you know, now. I'm looking at the sides, bottom. Sort of turned. Okay. You see how you can kind of pick them up and kind of yeah, feel look, how yeah, they light they really are. Light. Yeah. Yep. It's about there. We're there. Okay. Hey, guys. What'd you make me? We have a little bit of fry bread for you. Oh, yeah. Fresh. Oh, my gosh. Right now. Just got done. I don't even have to go to the fair this week. Yep. Just come right here. Got a little huckleberry jam. Tell us, tell us about the jam there, Michael. Oh, huckleberry you. jam is in house. It's made by our pastry chef, Susan Brunel. Mm. Oh my gosh. Ah! It's very delicious. I'm, a mess. I'm sorry. That's right. Look we'll at that. Yeah. It's like a elephant ear slash churro minus the sugar. Yeah. Delicious. It's so light and fluffy. I think you. Yeah. you know, sometimes it gets over mixed and it's a little chewy, but this is so good. All right, Michael, where do you get your huckleberries? We get our huckleberries from up in the mountains in the uh, Idaho region here. They grow at a certain elevation. They're seasonal, and um, but we do offer the jam year-round. Yeah, That's huckleberries amazing. are really hard to find. Oh, yeah, right now especially, right? Yeah, it's amazing native food. But I love that we can come get this year-round. Yep. Yes, absolutely. Yep, awesome. And are you out picking them? Uh, I have picked them before. It's, it's really fun getting up there. There's a lot of bears up there. Bigfoots, whatever, That's you know, weird. it's up in the wild for sure. <laughs> cool, well, thank you. This is awesome. So up next, we're going to go talk to Jade, see about a few more native foods from around the area. All right, we are here at the Coeur d'Alene Casino with Jade, tribe member, and she has been working super hard for us for the last couple days. So tell us a little bit about what you've been doing. Um, so I went hunting and I got an elk and uh, we put it in the ground and we have been cooking it for the last 24 hours and hopefully we can pull it out and feed some people. Yeah, that's exciting. incredible. So, okay, tell us about the process. So where did you find the elk? Um, so we were actually hunting for a couple of days. It was quite a process. Um, you got and, it just in the right amount of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah just in the Barely. nick of time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we found it um, up in the mountains. We've been out in quite a few different places along the reservation. And uh, we were able to harvest it about 6 a.m. Um, Sunday morning, Monday morning. And um, yeah, it was pretty nice. And the, the hunting process, you said most of it's by foot, right? Um, so actually, we were pretty close to the highway. We just we spotted them up on the, the top of the mountain and uh, got out, walked up there, um, hiked, and because we didn't want to scare them or anything mm -hmm. like yeah. that. And um, we actually have like a cow collar, so um, we called them in. It sounds like a calf and uh, we were able to um, get the herd to stay put and um, the cow presented itself and took the shot. Wow, oh, nice. that's wow. great. Yeah. And then the process of, what do you call it? Pit baking. Pit baking, mm -hmm. tell us about that. Um, so the pit bake is actually a traditional way of cooking. Um, people call it an earth oven um, mm -hmm. 
It's uh, common throughout many like different indigenous cultures, um, but in this area, um, we would normally cook camas and moss and elk, and so we'd have two different pits. Um, this time we're just doing the elk, um, but yeah. Um, you, kind of, you layer them together in different layers? So they cook up a little bit different times or kind of all at once? Um, so with the, with the camas and the moss, we mm -hmm. actually have them on different sides. Okay. Um, and they kind of help complement the flavors of each other. And um, we use different, um, we don't season them at all. Mm -hmm. uh, moss is one of like our first baby foods. Mm -hmm. So when we get it, it kind of comes out looking like um, tar and it tastes like black licorice. Oh, really? And oh. so we make it into about a soup. And oh, okay. it's, yeah, that's what we use. Does for it like take on some of that smoky flavor you get from? No, I wouldn't no. say so. No. Oh, interesting. And then that's what you feed to, like, one of the first foods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one so of our first baby foods. It's really nutritious. Um, it's from the top of tamaracks. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then what's wow. the flavor of camas? Uh, and camas kind of tastes like um, like a yam, I would say. Yeah, a I'm sweeter. not sure. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty mm -hmm. pretty sweet. A lot of people um, are kind of picky with the taste. Um, mm -hmm. It depends, yeah. You yeah. can't eat it raw, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And really what did you dark. season the elk with this time? You said it was a new blend. Um, yeah, so it was a secret blend from the restaurant over here. Oh. Um, <laughs> secret blend. Yeah. Um, normally, normally we just use a Johnny's seasoning salt. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So we just made the wrong. elevated it a little yeah, bit yeah. for yeah. us. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, and so what's the cultural significance of the pet bake? Um, so we just didn't have ovens back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, this was one of the most efficient ways to cook. Um, cook a large amount of meat at once and if we weren't drying meat or smoking meat we were cooking it in the ground and um, this is the traditional way to make camas um, because you can't eat it raw um, it's poisonous right yeah, yeah. It, it can it can really mess up your stomach yeah. wow but yeah so we would just make a pit of both and um, yeah just have a really big feast yeah. and tell us about your background with the tribe um, so I was born and raised here I'm Coeur d'Alene tribal member um, I'm 20 years old and um, I am currently going to school at the University of Idaho, but I've been interning uh, with the tribe every summer since I was 14. And um, so I work in um, the natural resources like management department. Mm -hmm. um, currently I'm a climate change intern. My title changes pretty frequently. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, um, I'm a youth representative. I'm a woman representative. I love, just love being involved with the tribe and everything. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, what are some other um, native foods that are, you know, around this area? Um, well, the whole the whole environment, I guess. Yeah. And um, one thing is like a native perspective. Um, you look at a mountain. Some people just see a mountain. Yeah. You see an abundance of food and yeah. medicine and um, just, everything right beneath your feet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just an extension of who we are, like yeah. as a person. And so, um, yeah, there's plenty of foods we have. Alderberries, harvest berries, huckleberries, salmon, elk, deer, um, pretty much anything Nettles. you can think of. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, That's very neat. And what are some of your favorites? Um, my favorite, I'd say, is moose. Yeah. Yeah. It's my favorite. Moose. What, what, do you, what do you like about it? Uh, it's just so tender. The stew is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Stew and fry bread. You guys yeah. already oh, know yeah, about that's that. Hard to, yeah. That's super hard to beat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and how often do you do one of these hunting and then like baking sessions? How many times a year? Um, usually I just do it once a year. Okay. Um, I've only done a solo bake twice. This is my second time. Mm -hmm. And so um, in order to be able to do it by yourself, you're supposed to be mentored three times. Mm. Um, and I was actually mentored on the Spokane Reservation in Walpinit by um, Kim Matheson. She's from here. Um, and yeah. What does it take to do a solo bake? Um, just to get the process down and have all the knowledge and be able to um, decipher what to tell people and what not to, um, just because some of the knowledge is um, like only for tribal members. Yeah. And you said it's kind of exhausting, so is it a lot of like heavy lifting, moving, what does that look like? Yeah, a lot of uh, wood chopping, a lot of digging and hole filling. And um, one of the most tedious processes is when we cook the moss, is cleaning it. Oh, um, yeah, you know, sure. it comes from the top of a tree, so there's a lot of bark, there's a lot yeah. of, sometimes there's mold, sometimes there's bugs and yeah. yeah getting um, all those things out of it. Yeah, and cleaning canvas is pretty hard too. And um, prepping the meat is probably one of the more time consuming things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Gosh. really similar. I was thinking of like Kahlua pork or something like that in Hawaii where they bury the pork, same kind of idea. So do you start with a big fire and then drop, and then when you get like the 
the rocks hot and then drop the elk in and then cover? Yeah, so actually we use sweat rocks. Okay. So um, they get really hot. They're, mm -hmm. um, I think it's basalt. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, it, they don't explode or anything like that. Yeah. And um, we like get them. Like normal rocks, they're not going to, yeah. when they touch with water, they're not going to blow up. Yeah, yeah, we get them red hot and then um, uh, we start doing the layers and um, we, it kind of depends on what we use for the layers, um, what flavor you want into the meat. Mm -hmm. um, you can use sweet grass, bear grass, um, some other types of leaves that I can't remember right now. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, we used alfalfa this time. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just uh, wrap up the meat and put it in the middle and then do the same layers on the rivers. And then you camp and watch it and baby it for 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah you just have you a fire on top. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And enjoy all your hard work. It's crazy how much goes into just this one meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's really rewarding. Yeah, um, we like to say that uh, the whole process is a uh, is a prayer. Yeah, in a like way. a journey. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, well, should we go outside and see what happens? Yeah, yeah that's good. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, the hunt this morning, we started about uh, sunrise and we went out about 5.30 and we actually uh, were out every day since Friday, every every morning, every night and we almost didn't get anything and uh, this is the last day we could have could have got something and thankfully uh, the animal uh, let us take it and we were able to go out into the mountains and um, harvest this animal and uh, get the pit going. Well, first of all, we like to get the pit dug a little early and uh, so it has time to dry out and you know just settle in and um, yeah so we get the pit dug and then we just get all of our supplies ready make sure we have all the wood cut we have the hay ready and um, we go get the elk and then let it hang for a couple days and um, then we come out here and do our thing and we get the the rocks going get the fire going um, make sure that the pit's all right and uh, then we get the elk ready by um, seasoning it and wrapping it up and then um, we uh, start doing the process of putting it into the ground um, and so basically um, that's just different layers of rocks and hay and um, and then the meat and then we just do it that way and cover it and then um, we put the dirt on top and then we put a fire on top to keep it keep it hot. All right, so obviously you dug it out of the pit I, and you can smell like the aroma of that alfalfa and now I get like that sort of roasted meat sort of smell to it. But mm -hmm. so kind of run us through a little bit. So we have in the bottom of the pit, you have rocks, correct? Mm -hmm. So you built a fire and then um, the rocks were underneath that and then you wrapped up the meat in a uh, muslin cloth. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then a little bit of burlap, the hay on top, and then you let it smoke. You put the dirt over top and then a fire on top of that. Is yep. that all correct? Yeah. Okay. So then how long does this cook for? Uh, so this cooks up for about 24 to 36 hours. Okay. Mm -hmm. So quite a while. You want like really, you yeah. need to be really tender. Yep. Okay. Really tender. Yeah. And it smells really good. I get really getting like that, that roasted meat, like smell to it. Mm -hmm. you, I thought you'd get maybe a little more smokiness, but I think that hay really permeates too. Yeah. It's like a vegetable soup sort of like yeah, smell Yeah. It, it really, it really cuts the, the gamey smell. Yeah. The yeah. For taste. sure. Okay. And so, um, and then you put a little bit of seasoning on there was, some sort of uh, seasoning salt? Uh, yeah, usually we just use uh, Johnny's seasoning salt. Okay. And then um, anything else? So you have to sit, you have to camp here for 24 to 36 hours. Yeah, there's always somebody watching the fire. Okay. Um, it's not really good practice to leave the food by itself. Mm -hmm. um, just like uh, when we have funerals, we don't like to leave um, the, the body by itself. So there's yeah. always somebody with it. There's always yeah. somebody watching. Um, that's also the practice for like a drum. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Okay, that makes sense. Then, and then you add a little bit of water in between to make sure the meat doesn't dry out so it continues to steam a little bit. Yeah, so we use water as kind of like a binder when we put on the, um, the seasoning. Oh, gotcha. And yeah. we also um, use water to activate the rocks to create steam okay. so that um, it actually becomes kind of like a pressure cooker. Oh, gotcha. That mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah, okay. Well, let's see, let's see the magic that you've created here. All right. Let's get into this one.
Got a little bit of a barrier there to keep all the critters out, keep the, <laughs> keep the dirt out. Yeah, the burlap really helps with that too. Yeah. Yeah, again, that smell, it smells so good. And you can see how tender it is. It's just kind of like really soft and kind of falling apart. Mm -hmm. A lot of juice coming out. Gloves. Gloves and tongs? Uh, sure, yes. Okay. Or maybe not the gloves, they're actually really dirty. Here, you want to? Yeah. If you need to. Oh yeah, that looks great. Oh, look how tender that is just falling apart. Mm -hmm. Check that out, get a, you better get a close-up of that. Yeah, it really does kind of look like just a slow roasted meat. Mm -hmm. Like very pot roasty sort of texture. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that looks so good. Yeah, that looks amazing. And the bones really just. Yeah, it's so soft. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. Can Anybody we try? Wanna... Can we try? Can I try a bite of it? Yeah. All right. Got my little plastic fork set here. Oh, I see. I see. I was just. Trying to be polite, but <laughs> really good. Yeah. I like All right, that. I'm gonna take more than mine. That's incredible. That's so good. Well, I'm gonna keep digging into this. Thank you for watching us on Crave TV. Catch more next weekend.